Hello everyone, dear friends. My name is Nicole and today I'd like to share my insights with you again. Today I would like to discuss the following topic. I often notice, for example, in me, that it happens that consciousness wants to narrow down my attention to a certain situation. I mean to develop from this an entire problem or an epic, so that I invest my attention as much as possible in this situation or in these thoughts, which it palms off on me. As a rule, it happens, I often know this from my experience, with those things where there is already a part of my attention, I mean those which are important to me. It is precisely when I have an attitude towards the situation, that where it plays. For example, this often happens in my relationship with people, when I care about people around me, and when I want relationship to be built in the best way possible, consciousness can manipulate this by means of the way a person looked at me, what he said, what he meant, whether he thinks I'm like this or different. Oh God, but I'm actually nice, I didn't want it to be like this, I wanted it to be another way. And it went… when you know how it works when you want it to be nice? In general, it narrows attention down to one point, precisely to those things where you are already investing your attention in. That's why it understands that it's important for you and tries to make you involved to the utmost. Now there is another working point that it happened in my life is with these vlogs. Now I'm investing my attention in making vlogs. I'm trying to make them beautiful and good quality. And it tells me all the time that I'm good for nothing. Don't do it. Where are you going at all? In short, it bullies me as it can. I understand that I sincerely want to do this, and that's why I do this despite what it says. In general, everyone has their own situation, everyone has their own specific thoughts on which it catches them. How did I find a way out for myself? How easy it is just to give it up? I already noticed these tricks long time ago, when it wants to narrow your attention like this, but you just bam and expand it. This understanding which Igor Mikhailovich gave us so many times already, that our three-dimensional world in which we live is a real illusion, meaning we are here, like in a certain simulation, like in a written program, which exists precisely in order to separate the living from the dead, so that the living could get through all these obstacles and reveal itself in its entirety. When you understand that the only goal in life is, in fact, to find the true life and all the obstacles that you encounter on your way are like running across a certain path with barriers. There are such sport paths. You know that you have to run to the end, and you run through obstacles without even noticing, especially when you train every day. Then each time it is easier and easier for you to overcome them. It is important for me to remember, no matter what happens, I mean, it doesn't matter at all, no matter what consciousness pumps off on you, no matter what situations occur, you just understand that each time you step over them, you become more mature internally, you feel more. As a result, I've noticed that Whenever there is a certain attack from the system or consciousness, and if you overcome the situation, then the spiritual world supports you. It really supports you. It fills you with love. Today consciousness draws you at some point that it's already the end of the world. While you, by easily overcoming the situation, rejected it all, and the next day you feel that you are loved. Well, you are very much loved, that's true. It seems that you don't concentrate as much as you usually do on your inner perceptions, but this love is spreading on its own. 
It's just that you have it in you in even greater amount. At some point I call it for myself a spiritual gift. And this motivates me to move. Every time, after overcoming something, the spiritual gift comes, with which you can feel what is real life is and how it is to live. Therefore, it is only worth a try. And there is also such cool awareness and understanding. If our world is an illusion, and our main goal is to find the true life, then whatever happens, now our world is there, and now I'm overcoming some obstacles in my external life or in my consciousness. At some point, I had such an association. I want to show you. Now our world exists, and then bam! And there is nothing. And nothing just like it never existed. And that's when you realize that at some point our illusory world might simply disappear like a soap bubble. And everything that actually remains with you is whether you have gained the true life or not. Because if a person hasn't gained it, then it is as if he didn't exist. He lives with this illusion. And only you can do your best. Only you know how sincerely you want to come to God internally, how much you strive for life, because no one will X-ray you, no one will look at the situations in your consciousness that you have to overcome, or what life situations you have to overcome. The main point for you is to get there. The main point for you is to make your way. Then you become noticeable. Then you are seen. Then you are happy. Then you become equal among equals. As in the one of the videos, Sigur Mihailovich gave an example of how a lotus appears on the top of a swamp. When it opens, it is noticeable, it pleases with its beauty. And it doesn't matter what muddy waters the lotus had to get through in order to manifest itself. It doesn't matter what obstacles it encountered, no one sees this. They only see the main thing that it gets through. It often happens that consciousness begins to compare and say that it's easier for someone to come to God because his consciousness considers his soul is pure. For someone, for example, it is easier because he had acquired knowledge earlier, so he has fewer patterns of consciousness. We will never get into the shoes of other people. We will never feel what this person feels and what experience he has had. And everyone has their own. Therefore, it is very important to hurry up to gain your spiritual experience. It is very important to hurry up, to leave, and at least to give others such an opportunity to bring knowledge that there is such an opportunity to live in love and find the true life. It seems to me that it's a shame to be born and to have such a chance to find eternal life and not even know about it. Therefore, I would like to thank all those who have made efforts to ensure that at some point this knowledge reaches me. And in turn, I would like to do my best to make sure that others have at least the conditions and the opportunities to hear and accept this knowledge for themselves whether they need it or not. Thank you very much, friends. The first thing is studying yourself. And everyone follows this path. It will not work otherwise. Until you understand that your consciousness actually plays evil tricks on you and shows you much of what you consider to be real, but it's actually not. Well, it's just a fight for your attention. Until you realize this, you won't understand more, right? What is this world? It's just an illusion. It's the shadows of distorting mirrors of a septum. There is a certain force that generates everything. It all becomes distorted and eventually 
turns into a wave. This wave becomes matter. And it turns out that we are an illusion. But you and I feel each other, ourselves, our hands, the table and everything else. For us this is important. Yet who feels? How does he feel? Why does he feel? And what is behind this? The fact is that there is something different. That which created all matter. And which is life itself. After all, if we remove what is called the Holy Spirit or God's manifestation, everything will actually disappear. You see? Thanks to this light inside of a septum, its mirrors reflect and create an illusion. They actually reflect the inner light. They create matter. If we take a look at what matter really is, matter is an illusion. But the denser this illusion is, the more material it becomes. And matter perceives matter as matter. Just note, even a dream. Let's take a simple thing. The work of mind. In a dream, we feel everything as real. There is no difference to us between here and there. In rare cases, we realize that it's a dream, right? But apart from that, it's all real. Again, from the position of an observer or a viewer, we see this theater of actions. For us, solid is solid, material is material, we smell and taste things, life passes. Absolutely realistically for us. The same illusion is here. How is it different? Well, I would say it differs in its duration. And it also differs radically by the fact that in this illusion we have an opportunity to gain life. Joy may be different. There may be joy from consciousness, from acquisition of something. But it is fleeting. That's why the joy of unity with the spiritual world through feelings does not run out. It doesn't cease and doesn't bore. It cannot be boring. The point is that it is always there, and every instant is new. It's an infinity of new sensations and perceptions through feeling, so to say. It's a vibrant life. It is filled with life. A life filled with life. You cannot call it otherwise. While in the material world, there is a transitory illusion. If a person, having come to this world, hasn't come out of it alive, this means he has simply burned his life. That's why it is necessary to study one's own consciousness. But there is a little phenomenon here. When a person studies his consciousness, it gets horrified. Consciousness gets horrified. Whereas when personality realizes that it is personality, it experiences incredible happiness. Why does this happen? Because at these moments, each of them comes into contact with the one who created them.